Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, as promised, I'm here to do a uh, video uh, configuration video for Private View Lint. Um, I did it do the uh, previous video on, um, you know, what exactly pre Private View Lint is, the practical use. Pretty much, it's just explained this uh, topology. So we're gonna go ahead and configure this. Um, now, I did do some research just to see if you guys could, uh, if you guys were able to do this on your own as well. Um, but unfortunately there aren't any virtualization platforms that can do private VLANs yet and I was wrong about the 3550 only the uh, 3750 and 3560s could do it um, no. this is a uh, this is a Cisco uh, link that tells you pretty much you know which devices can support private VLANs and uh, if it does the edge ports and you know so you know this is a uh, still a little bit of research so if you want to try this on your own just make sure you have the hardware uh, I'll show you what my equipment looks like. <clears throat> From my preview, there it is. All right, so this is what my uh, my mini rack looks like. This isn't even half my gear, but this is just the stuff that I use um, for in this in a, in association with my uh, physical gear. Um, so essentially, this is your your uh, router one, two, three, four. Oh, well, router one's here is a twenty eight hundred one, two, three, four. Um, and then my 3750 here. Um, now, in this graphic, you see that we have a server here. Um, the server is actually representing my. I have an iMac that's actually connected to the 3750 switch um, off of. Gosh, I hate it when you can't find your applications. There you go. All right, so this little uh, blue port here, that's actually connected to my iMac. Um, that is actually simulating the server that's going to be in that uh, uh, well, for what we're going to do in this example. So, just a brief overview. Um, essentially, what we're going to do in this uh, lab here, we're, we're going to be configuring the 3750 here, switch one. Um, they're all going to be a part of this uh, public IP major subnet of 62.235.52 slash zero. Um, I mean dot zero slash twenty nine. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to configure three VLANs in total. VLAN 50, which is going to be your primary VLAN where the main, uh, where everybody's going to, it, which pretty much is your primary VLAN. And then you got your VLAN 100 and a VLAN 200. Um, VLAN 100 being your community VLAN, VLAN 200 being your isolated. And the community VLAN, we're going to put uh, the R3 and R2 in that VLAN so they can communicate with each other and be able to talk back to the Switch 1 as well as Router 1's interface um, via the promiscuous port. And router uh, four, which is Lockheed, which he doesn't need to access any local resources. He's just gonna hop to his gateway, which is router one, um, via the promiscuous port, and also um, the interface that's connecting uh, to the data services here, um, which I believe is zero six. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get into the uh, the main the core configuration of it. I have a putty session pulled up. Uh, Technically, right now my, this computer here, I don't have a. Um, I don't have the uh, console port on it, so my other computer that has a console is just a pain in the butt to, to remote to it just because it's an old piece of junk computer, so it's really choppy, so I ended up having to create a little backdoor into the switch. Um, but essentially, we're logged into the switch now. Uh, you can see, we do a show version. You can see that we're on the uh, 3750, the IP services, so this is the EMI model. Um, I to believe that it needs to get have the EMI model for it to work, so... Uh, so uh, well, I don't believe so. I think the MI is just for um, if you want to do uh, some advanced routing stuff. But uh, uh, pretty much this is like I said the uh, thirty seven fifty. And if we do a show CDP neighbor, we can see that. Uh, do that. If we do a show CDP neighbor. We can see that we're talking to router one, two, three, and four, right? Right now, um, they're in a default port, so they all can communicate with each other. So if I do a show run interface, they're all well, definitely gotta put fast. So the, this is essentially the uh, configuration that it's in now. So let me go ahead and remove that command interface range f a one slash zero slash one. Before, uh, before, uh, 
I'm gonna just do that show run again. Okay. So right now they're in a standard access VLAN. I do have VLAN 50 configured, but it's not set up as a primary VLAN for the uh, for the actual um, private VLANs. For uh, so right now they're all communicating in a regular fashion, regular layer two step fashion using regular VLAN 50. So we can verify that. Um, we can just ping all these devices here. So we'll ping dot one is pingable, dot two is pingable, dot three is pingable, and dot four is pingable. And just uh, uh, just so we can verify that it's working at a regular layer two, or we'll, we'll log in the router four. So you know, remember we are in the Lockheed router, and technically by this design, Lockheed isn't supposed to be able to ping Dell. So if I bring that IP address there, as you can see, we're going to be able to ping Dell, which is not what we want at all. So we can ping router two and router three, which is no, not good, not good. Security vulnerability all the way. So let's go ahead and implement the private VLAN so we can correct that problem. So we have the isolation at layer two and uh, Lockheed can access the data services as well as the uh, router one gateway to get out to the internet and vice versa. <clears throat> so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hop back on switch one. And the first step is we wanna make sure that uh, your VTP mode is in transparent. So VTP status, as you can see, I already configured it to transparent mode, but that is a must. That is one of the prerequisites before private VLANs can be configured. Actually, if you forget this step, when you start doing the private VLAN configuration, it's going to say, please put your, uh, you know what, we'll just go ahead and show you. So, VTP mode server. Cool. So, we put it in server mode. So, let's go ahead and start. So, the first thing that I like to do, just because of uh, um, ease of uh, uh, going back and forth, I like to create my secondary VLANs first. And once your secondary VLANs are created, then I would uh, go in, specify my primary VLAN, and then I would then associate it uh, all at one point. Uh, that's uh, kind of my process. Everybody does it kind of their own way. They'll create the private VLAN first and the primary VLAN, then create the isolated, then go back and associate them. You know, I just like to stay in one place. Me personally, work smart, not hard. So we'll go ahead and go to VLAN 100 first. So we'll do VLAN 100, private VLAN. And remember, VLAN 100, we're going to make a community VLAN. So We'll do community. Ah, but remember what I told you, how you're gonna get that uh, error message? Well, there it is there. Um, so what we're gonna have to do first is go to VTP mode, transparent, and we're in transparent mode. Now let's go ahead and go back to VLAN 100. Um, we'll go to private VLAN community, and perfect. So we got our first private VLAN uh, configured. And now we'll do our next second secondary VLAN, which is VLAN 200. And then we'll do private VLAN isolated. Oh, come on now. Oh, I'm stupid. <laughs> okay, so I don't want to do interface VLAN 200. So let's go ahead and. My bad. <laughs> Why is my VLAN? So you're going to go to VLAN 200, right? private VLAN and we want to go isolated. Perfect. So now let's do our primary VLAN. So we go to VLAN 50, private VLAN primary. Perfect. And then we might see an error message because currently, remember what I said before that um, private uh, uh, primary VLAN is 50 and currently VLAN 50 is uh, associated to my switch ports. And by design, um, you're not allowed to assign any of your primary VLANs to an access port as a straight up access port. Um, so we might get some error message when I do my associations, but we'll see here. So private loop uh, VLAN association, and we want to go ahead and add uh, 100, 200. Hopefully it, it doesn't reject the commands because of the current port configuration and it didn't, so that's a good sign. And as you can see, we uh, created that portion of it. So. We have our private VLANs configured, and actually, yeah, we just seen. I'm looking at my ports light, port lights now, and it just cracked out. Um, 
because essentially they're uh, they're not supposed to be assigned. And actually, I want to see if I can do a show interface status. Yeah, but it's not necessarily seeing, showing what I'm seeing here, but it, it's definitely in an amber state um, mode. So that's why you can indicate if there's a problem. So you can see right now, all these interfaces are connected to uh, VLAN 50. So what we're going to do, uh, so we got the VLANs configured. Let's go ahead and just look at the configuration. Show run. So we got what we needed done. We got 2 LAN 100 here, 3 uh, 100 here. And then 50 associating 200 and uh, 100 and 200. Perfecto. All right, so for this particular example, because I'm using the 3750 switch as the interconnect between all of these devices, we're going to have essentially two different types of promiscuous ports. Well, three, really. Well, we're going to have two different types of promiscuous ports. One that operates as on the S S SVI, which is the VLAN 50 SVI. And then uh, the two facing the server uh, going towards... Um, my iMac and then also the router one. So let's go ahead and uh, get our, uh, let's get that configured first because we're going to need that when we start doing testing after we configure our host ports. So let's go ahead and go to config T. We're going to go to VLAN 50, interface VLAN 50. So what you want to do is you go private VLAN mapping and you're going to add the private VLANs that the, that the secondary VLANs that will be able to communicate with this quote unquote SVI, which is essentially treating it like a promiscuous port. So we want to add VLAN 100, 200. So switch 5 should always have connectivity after we configure our host ports. So let's do a show CDP neighbor and let's see what port 1 is. So we're going to go here first. First port we're going to configure is going to be the R1 interface, which is the gateway interface to the internet. We're going to configure that as a promiscuous port. So we're going to go here, interface, pass Ethernet, blah, 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 blah. So first thing you want to do is switch port mode. You want to switch it to private VLAN, and you want to go to promiscuous. Perfect. So after you do that, you're going to go to switch port private VLAN. And then you want to go to mapping. You want to select your primary VLAN first, which would be 50. And then you want to add the VLANs that will be able to talk to it. So you want to do 100, 200. Perfecto. Show run interface FA1 slash 0 slash 1. As you can see, our private VLAN mapping is there for the promiscuous port. Perfect. Now, we're going to go ahead and uh, do the same thing for, let's do... Uh, the port going towards my iMac to make that a promiscuous port and that should be double check again that joker should be port uh, oh where am I coming in on that one five five so we want to go to interface five interface fa zero slash five and same thing, you want to do switch port mode private VLAN, uh, promiscuous, switch port private VLAN, uh, private VLAN mapping, and you want to do 50, and then you want to add, you don't necessarily have to add the keyboard, you just want to use add if you had existing VLANs on there, it's just like if you were creating a trunk port, and you wanted to do the switch port trunk allowed the command. If you don't add the add and you had existing VLANs on there, it'll blow that whole configuration out. That's essentially what this add is doing. So I just get into the habit of using add because uh, I've done that in, in, in production before and uh, thank God I caught it quickly, but it could have been bad if I didn't. So uh, 100, 200, and we got that mapped. Perfecto. So the next thing that we want to do so we got the promiscuous port set up. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and stop the video here. We're gonna pick up from this point on.